Son of a bitch. That is fucking refurbished. Apple gave this dude a refurbished ass board. Look, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? How do you have the gall to say that independent repair centers are not properly trained and may not know what they're doing when that's how you solder a fucking QFN? What the fuck is that? So anyway, if you look over here, you'll see that this one pad over here looks like it's damaged. And it was never... So when this board got refurbished, because this customer did go to Apple to get this replacement board, whoever's refurbishing these boards for Apple does not follow my guidelines regarding soldering over corrosion or anything that's burned. So you don't solder over the corrosion. This is a question I get a lot, Lewis, why are you soldering on top of corrosion? I'm not. You may see me doing this constantly. I'm scraping, scraping, scraping. So what I'm doing over here is I'm scraping to ensure that I get rid of all of that junky, rusty looking crap and I want that all to get collected on this solder blob that is going onto my iron. Hey everyone, how's it going? So today we're going to be getting started with a MacBook that is not working properly or turning on. This is an A1708 MacBook and we are going to go over the problem here. It says initially it would not connect to 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal or the connection would drop down to single bit transfer rates when anything is plugged into any Thunderbolt port. We sent the computer to Apple and they replaced the logic board and sent it back and said 2.4 gigahertz wouldn't work on this laptop. We have to use 5 gigahertz. In the process it introduced a new issue. If the computer is shut off or runs out of battery the power button will not turn the computer on anymore. The only solution is to do command it could reset the SMC, shift control, option power. This worked for a few months, but every time it took longer for the computer to boot up. Two days ago, this method no longer works and the computer will not turn on. This is very often a dead CPU on the A1708 model MacBook. You'll notice random crashing, and then after the random crashing occurs, it just dies. I really did think that this was something unique to the A1534 12-inch MacBook. That thing's a total piece of shit. It'll start giving you lines in the screen and random crashing and then be dead and just taking a static three to 500 milliamps. That's dead CPU. And these often have dead CPU as well. So I'm going to plug this thing in and see if we can figure out what is going on with it. So as you can see here, it's taking a static... 350 milliamps. Hopefully you're gonna get nice and nauseous there at my new desk setup. Anytime I tap something, it's like I have the camera mount mounted to the monitor, and then the monitor is mounted onto the desk, so you get double shake right there. Anyway, 350 milliamps static. That's typically a short to ground or some dead CPU. So let's see if we have a short to ground on one of our main power rails called PP Bus G3 Hot. The battery is unplugged. No short. So why are you taking a straight up 350 milliamps but not doing anything? That's really weird. Hmm. Fuse blown. Fuse good. You see how it's at 350 milliamps the entire time, just nice and steady like that? It's really strange, because if it's turning on, it'll be going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. It really does tend to be indicative of a short circuit on some rail that's just taking a steady amount and keeping everything from turning on. We have 13 volts on PP bus, though. So I'm going to go through this and see if there's a short. There's most likely not a short. Most likely this is a dead CPU, and it's a total waste of my time. But if there's anything I enjoy doing here at Ross and Repair... It's wasting my time on boards that are complete piles of crap. The stuff that makes it into our pile is usually the stuff that nobody else wanted to fix. It's... Uh, 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 I don't want to fix crap all day. I want something that's fixable. I feel like I have a Paul cue. This is karma. This is absolute karma. Who called Clinton the COVID kitty? He is not a Cov ID cat. He's a Kivit cat. Kivit cat causes Cov ID. This, speaking of, this computer does have hair in it. Nope, it's not, D Satan. Yes, is Twitch is for pre recorded video only. You may wonder how is it that I'm able to call your name if this is a pre recorded video that's not live? That's because your life is pre recorded and not live. Think about that. So it looks like wrong, wrong screw is in here because it doesn't want to come out even when fully unscrewed. Yep, you're wrong, screw. Who wrong screwed you? Oh, yeah, this guy sent his computer to Apple. Of course it's going to be wrong screwed. 
Why wouldn't it be wrong, Scrooge? If the video is not live, yet the person is able to respond to your chat, does that mean that determinism wins over free will? Think about it. I think that would be the ultimate argument for determinism. If you believe that the video is not live, yet the host of the video is able to call you out in chat and respond to you, does that mean that free will doesn't exist? Because that would mean that we live in a deterministic world. That everything is a rerun of something else. But you've opened that can of worms by asking that question. You've opened that can of worms. Why does CPU die here? It dies because it's inside of an Apple product. It doesn't want to be used in that way. It's kind of like when terrorists get caught by Jack Bauer and then they start getting questioned and they wind up killing themselves while Jack's looking the other way. They just don't want to be used in that way, you know? They decide they'd rather be gone than live a life inside of an Apple product working for the enemy. Who wants to work at 80 Celsius idle their whole life? Yeah, that's, that's, that's an uncomfortable temperature. Now, I imagine that one of the SO rails is... I want to figure out which one of these is shorted, because something's going to be shorted here. So we need to open up a schematic for the 820-00840 and see what's going on with that. So we are going to go through this list and see if any of them are shorted. Now remember, in order to have S5 rails, you have to have G3 hot. Also, you need to have your S4 before you have your S3. You need to have your S3 before you have your SO. So let's try and figure out which tier to start looking at, because measuring every single power rail is going to take a ridiculously annoying amount of time. And who the hell wants to waste time like that? So let's check every rail. Now, first, we're going to start with our PP bus, which I believe we already checked. But what the hell? We'll check it again. Why not check it again? I paid some of my rent in Ash Funk. I, I, I paid it 12 days late, but I paid it. I'm still on half rent. Next month is when full, month, full rent comes in. I was talking. I was just like, like shared a curiosity with my, uh, with the management company for the building. And I said, you know, how are people really handling this? Because this has got to be a nightmare for the other businesses that are all based on walk-in business when they're told they cannot have walk-in business anymore by law. And he said, oh, yeah, they have to have business loss of income insurance or business interruption insurance. And I said, yeah, you know, I, I had that a while ago. And funny thing about that is that they told me that it wouldn't cover it for some ridiculous reason that made no sense they, because I did not have flood insurance. But I didn't need to have flood insurance since my business was not damaged by a flood. And, and he's like, yeah, insurance does kind of suck. And I said, okay, well, if insurance kind of sucks, then why are you expecting everybody to pay, still pay rent with it? How has a landlord reacted for the delay? Uh -huh. Well, they gave me a website to pay my rent on that didn't actually work, so there's that. I solved it yesterday, but still, it's just like, that's, that's in the back of my freaking mind right now, you know? All right, I'm missing PP5E S5. Let's see if there is a short to ground on it. There isn't. But that's really on the back of my mind. So there was a website to pay my rent, and when I used it, it the only address it would give me was another building. And I thought to myself, do I really want to pay someone else's rent? Nah. So it kind of... The thing is, any bill that I have right now, any, business, any bill that I have that requires I pay it by a check, just goes to the bottom of the pile. And people can say that's immature, that's a crappy way to do business, but like the way my business works, is I need to make it easy for customers to pay because if I don't make it easy for customers to pay, they will put off paying me. So I've made it as easy as possible to pay. There are you know, numerous ways that you could... Son of a bitch, that is fucking refurbished. Apple gave this dude a refurbished ass board. Look, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? How do you have the gall to say that independent repair centers are not properly trained and may not know what they're doing when that's how you solder a fucking QFN? What the fuck is that? What? The fuck? Look at this. It's still... Ugh. Clean off your goddamn flux in an ultrasonic, you cunt. Jesus Christ. I like my flux, but I like my crest more. All right, I don't trust that shit, so we're gonna change that. We're going to change that with an unauthorized TPS 51980 from, from, from me. Anyway, where was I talking about? Oh, yeah, it's a rent thing. So anybody, if, if you have a bill and you require that that bill be paid by check, you're probably not going to get paid on time by me. I'm just going to say that right up front. If you have no other fucking way of accepting payments other than a check, then your bill is just on the absolute bottom of the pile. It's 2020. If you need a check to get paid, like, I, I get it, I respect it, but you're gonna get paid when I decide to go to the bank for something else and ask for counter checks. 
because my bank does not give me free business checks anymore. If I want a checkbook, I have to buy it. And it's not even the buying it that's a pain in the ass because it comes out to, I don't know, like 50 cents, 20 cents, a uh, dollar or so a check if I wanted a nice book. It's that I have to buy it off of another website and I have to enter a bunch of information about my bank account into that website. So not only am I paying for a checkbook, but I have to fucking configure my own checkbook. It's not like I just walk into the bank and say, I want a checkbook for this account. That's really, really annoying. So if you require that, I'm pay that, that you get paid by check, that's cool. You get your check when I have time to go to the bank, when I need to go to the bank for something else, and I ask for counter checks. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not making a trip to the bank every time I need to pay a bill. It's fucking ridiculous. Enter, you know, you can enter the 21st century like everybody else. So anyway, if you look over here, you'll see that this one pad over here looks like it's damaged. And it was never... So when this board got refurbished, because this customer did go to Apple to get this replacement board, Whoever's refurbishing these boards for Apple does not follow my guidelines regarding soldering over corrosion or anything that's burned. So you don't solder over the corrosion. This is a question I get a lot, Lewis, why are you soldering on top of corrosion? I'm not. You may see me doing this constantly. I'm scraping, scraping, scraping. So what I'm doing over here is I'm scraping to ensure that I get rid of all of that junky, rusty looking crap and I want that all to get collected on this solder blob that is going onto my iron. Because this, this really hot solder, the flux is going to help that happen. There's flux in the solder, and as I'm moving it back and forth and scraping, what I want to have happen is for all that nasty crap to go onto the iron itself, onto that blob of solder. And then once I'm done with that, I go over it with this Gootwick that I have here that you can get on store.rossmangroup.com. Don't delay, Apple or authorized service provider. Buy today. Add some more Amtec flux, and I'm going to go over that again. And people may think this is overkill, but that's fine. I don't want my board to look like this garbage. We have standards here at Rossman Repair. We have standards. Look. Apparently, they're higher than the Apple one. But this is what we do. And I'm just going to keep cutting off little bits of that. And then I'm going to... Now, the, the wick acts very much so kind of like sandpaper. And it's going to help me a lot there. See? I'm going to scrub. I'm not going to solder on top of corrosion. So there I had a lot of mixed leaded and lead-free solder. The leaded solder makes it easier to remove things because it melts at a lower temperature. But it's also just in general easier to work with. And I'm just you know, I'm going, going around here. These, these pads are not like the pads on an iPhone. I can use a lot more force before I have to worry about anything. So, by the way, if you're, doing, if you're looking at what I'm doing here, don't do as I do here on an iPhone motherboard because those are different. The pads are stuck on with a lot less... Uh, Bro, you know, alcohol dispensers that don't dispense until you beat them are partially responsible for the spread of coronavirus. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to clean this up like so. And see, now this is a surface that you can solder to. You don't solder on top of burn marks. You don't solder on top of corrosion. That's not how any of this is supposed to work. You solder on a clean surface. See? Like this. Okay, now we're ready. Let's get rid of that alcohol with the hot air. Add flux. Now we tin the pads. And I'm just going to do a little mild scrape on each one. See? Just like that. And then the center pad. Alright, wait for my iron to heat up. Beeped. Okay, we got a nice little mountain on the center pad. 
a mound there. More flux. Now we're going to grab a TPS 51980 chip from store.rossmangroup.com. Where else would you get your TPS 51980 chip? I guess store.rossmangroup.com is totally out of stock now. I got a chip from a donor board. I can't get this chip from Texas Instruments uh, because Apple, so I have to get them from China. The Corona has kind of slowed that down. But luckily, I have some donor boards here with chips. We're gonna take a nice, happy little certified pre-owned chip here for my donor. Over this chip to the side of the TPS 50980, just so it doesn't get warm, I put a box cutter over it as my heatsink. Now we're gonna float this into place. I push down so it's not making some nice contact with the board. You don't want the chip to be sticking up from the board because the chip, same with a connector that you're soldering, if it's too high, it's going to be very difficult to solder. The solder, ideally, the chip would actually work because it's it's flat on the board without you soldering it. That, that you know, that's what you're, what you're going for. You want it to be so close to the board that even if it's not soldered, it's just making enough contact that it works. And then the solder is just kind of there to hold it in place. So that's what I'm really going for. We go over each joint individually. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. That's great. There we go. Now we're going to see if we get anything different. Okay, check it out. It's no longer staying at 350 milliamps static. It's staying at 130 to 170, 250, two, uh, 200, 180, 100 milliamps, 100 mil 80 milliamps. It's doing something. I still think that this is most likely going to have a dead CPU. I still have no faith in this board. I'm fairly certain. Yeah, 100... 110 milliamps most likely means that it's a dead CPU. This thing is brain dead. It's not actually doing anything. But we fixed the first problem here. This was an Apple refurb board. It was very obviously an Apple refurb board. And the Apple refurb boards are, I mean, you see the quality of it. This is just garbage. You're soldering on top of burn marks and corrosion. It's awful. And I don't have any trust or faith in them. Let's just double check and see before we write this off entirely as a brain dead pile of junk. Cov ID. All we want to do here is see if we get anything on the screen. We want to see if the CPU has Cov ID 19. Hopefully it does not. There you go. All right. The machine looks like it boots up again. And it does turn on. So before it wasn't turning on, this customer had a machine that was giving them CPU issues. They had it replaced by Apple. Apple fixed the board. And when Apple fixed the board, they literally soldered a chip on top of burn marks. And you could see that instead of having a proper little solder bump like there were on, on all the QFNs, a nice little smooth hill, there was what looked like a pebble. And then when I moved the pebble, you could see that there were actual burn marks on the solder pad. Again, this is very important, it, whether it's because a chip has burned out or because there's liquid damage. If you see rust there, you don't solder on top of it. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is 
I'm going over it with the iron and I'm doing mild scraping, not harsh scraping, mild scraping. On an iPhone, much more mild scraping, but here, mild scraping. And if it's a power pad, I know that it's going to be attached to a very thick power play and I know it's something where I can do a little bit more scraping. Here, I believe it was the PP Bush G3 Hot input to the TPS 50980. That chip is responsible for our 5 volt rail. PP5 ES5 was missing. When you take a look at this, the pin that I was looking at right over here that was burned, this is the pin where PP Bush G3 Hot, the 13 volt rail, is going to come into the chip. That's the highest voltage, the highest amperage that's going to come into the chip. So there's going to be a nice hearty power play in there for me to work with. So I am able to do a scraping a little bit harder than usual. And I scrape, I solder. I'm not soldering on top of the corrosion. I'm adding solder as I scrape because I want all of that rust and garbage and junk to get sucked up into that big burning solder ball so that I can then clean it off and remove it. And I keep doing that back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Then once I'm done doing that, I'm going to use some wick right here, which by the way, you can buy on store.rossmangroup.com. This wick over here is going to suck everything up and it also works kind of like sandpaper. Jessa doesn't like wicking pads and I completely understand why she doesn't because on iPhones, pads lift very, very easily in contrast to MacBooks. Here, same thing kind of applies, but since we're in A, MacBook, more sturdy board and B, that is a pad for 13 volt higher amperage input to this chip, I can be a little rugged with it. So I use that and I was using it kind of like sandpaper to not just get rid of the solder that was on the pads, but also to kind of help me wipe away any of that junk. Then I put a chip on top of it. Also, I am out of that chip at the moment. I was in, I had to grab it off of a donor board. I'm not able to buy that chip through standard means because what Apple tends to do is they reach out to companies like Intersil and Texas Instruments and say, hey, you know this chip that's very commonly used and change this one thing about it and then only sell it to us so that we're the only ones who can fix our machines. Can we, can we cut that shit out? Is it... Like, the supply chains are already slowed down due to coronavirus. So it's taking me much more time to get chips like this in, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Imagine if I could just buy that chip from Mouser or DigiKey. What if I was a much higher volume business and I just couldn't deal with taking them all off of donor boards? It's, it's really lame. And the way that this board was refurbished was, in my opinion, a complete disgrace. Shame on you. Shame on you for making it sound like the independents are the ones that are going to do this. The very thing you're afraid of is that your, 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 divide, your brand is going to be damaged by the fact that unauthorized people work on your stuff. If a device has worked done on it by an unauthorized person that has nothing to do with Apple and it's a bad repair, that doesn't really do much. But if you refurbish the device yourself using your own technicians and you're soldering on top of corrosion, see, that fucks up your brand. And I go over this in every video. I, I don't charge money for these videos. They're all free. So Apple, if you'd like to play these at Flextronics or, or CSAT or wherever it is that you are having people do these types of repairs, you're more than welcome to use my videos as training. I'm not going to charge you. It'll result in your brand looking better. That's it for today. And as always, I hope that you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.